Okay, boys and girls. Well, this is officially the end of the beginning. So today is the day where I am pulling the engine on my uh, 280ZX to begin the turbocharging process. Now, this is going to be by far the most mechanically extensive work I've done on this car, and I am a little nervous, but I have pulled two of these engines before on S30s, and the process is very simple um, and uh, relatively the same for the S130, except you just have more accessories. So I'll be using uh, all factory Nissan turbo hardware, as you can see here. These are the uh, major components that will be on the vehicle. So this is an original uh, TBO3 turbocharger off of a car that was wrecked in 1984 that had like 21,000 miles on it. You can tell because if you look at the hot side of the exhaust, there's pretty much no rust on this whatsoever. Obviously there's no shaft play on the turbine, although it is a little bit stiff, probably gummed up from old oil sitting in here for who knows how long. Um, of course with the elbow um, for the downpipe. And of course here we have the charge pipe which goes from the turbocharger to the intake manifold. And of course, what everyone who's doing a turbo swap on these things desires, a turbo manifold. I have this all heat wrapped and ready to go with new gaskets and such. And um, I have all the other components as well. I have the uh, you know, the intake, I have an original oil feed line, a drain, a bunch of other stuff. Um, you know, it is California, so in order for this car to be smog legal, I do have to use all factory parts, which is why I'm doing this. And I don't want to mess around with the fucking referee and all this other crazy crap, especially with these extremely strict smog laws that are continuing to manifest in the government. So I've already gone ahead and uh, started removing some stuff. I have uh, got the mega squirt harness all off the engine and uh, relatively out of the way. Um, I started taking some of the accessories off. I've got the cruise control and all the climate control and such disconnected. Um, of course, the fuel system is all disconnected, but um, the main things uh, before I pull the engine that I'm gonna have to uh, work around are obviously the power steering pump and on the other side, the uh, AC compressor. That's all gonna have to be detached and kind of stowed out of the way for the engine to come out. Everything else is pretty much the same on the, uh, the S30s that I've worked on. So of course, other than that, you have uh, the radiator, starter, obviously both engine mounts, um, the heater core needs to be disconnected, and of course, disconnect the uh, engine from the transmission. Now, I'm, I'm not pulling these together. I'm not pulling the engine and the transmission together. Um, mainly because I'm working with a relatively crude setup, just like last time, where I just got the cherry picker and just some chain. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to tilt the engine up because it's just, it's just, that setup is just not available around here, unfortunately. But I've done it this way with three other cars and it works fine. You just have to get a little bit of wiggling for the engine and transmission to mate back up together. And that's really it. So without further ado, let's get this going. Okay, so I've got basically all of the silly stuff out of the way. The air intake is completely removed. I have all of the lines disconnected from the uh, power steering pump, as well as the uh, coolant lines for the heater. And uh, the starter is disconnected, so now that all this is kind of out of the way, what I'm gonna do next is pull out the radiator. And once the radiator is out, we're gonna have a lot more room to dick with the AC compressor and the alternator and that sort of stuff. Start pulling off these fucking hoses, cause hose mad. You passed me that screwdriver. Yes, sir. All right, so the radiator is out. Uh, we took it out with the shroud, mainly meaning I only have half the shroud on there because the champion radiator, you can't put the lower shroud on. But that's out and without harm. We got tons of room to work on the AC compressor and uh, alternator and some other stuff. And uh, yeah, once all that is clear, we're pretty much good for a full send.
Okay, so I think we're just about uh, ready to pull the engine out. Um, we've got just about everything disconnected that I can think of. Solder's out, alternator disconnected, power steering is disconnected, all the wiring for various things. AC compressor is off, like I mentioned, belts. Um, I think uh, at this point, obviously we gotta take the hood off, maybe start uh, cracking some bolts loose on the bell housing, and then uh, look up the cherry picker and see if she'll come out without breaking anything. Where'd you get this NASA space grade tape for your fuel reel? Internet? Oh, she's coming. Get ready, Mike. Oh, all right. Nice and easy. Bring her up. There we go. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I think it looks even better now. Send it like this. Yeah. Just need some spikes, maybe a couple so machine guns in the front. Control. So the, yeah. the the hood is off, and now we have full access to the engine. So now what we're gonna do is uh, prepare the cherry picker and uh, fucking take the bitch out. My heart is racing. My hands are shaking. <laughs> Okay, boys and girls, well, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Everything that fastens the engine to the car is removed. Uh, bolts for the engine mounts are removed. Uh, bell housing is removed. And, of course, all the accessories and such. But um, with a bit of finesse and some caution, I think she'll be out relatively well. Okay. All right. All hands on deck. I'm going to have you hold. Make sure the engine doesn't come too far this way. Because you're going to kind of have to put a little bit of weight on it. And I'm going to take it from the front. All right, start up bringing her up a little bit. You should put a little bit of wood in between there and the radiator. Oh, it's the condenser. Oh, the condenser. Yeah, it's broken anyway. Oh, okay. Give it a little shake. Shake, shake, shake. Yeah. Okay. There it goes. You gotta get it from. The, you gotta give it the old reach around on the top now, Connor. Uh, you want me to give it the old reach around? Yeah. There you yeah, go. There you oh go. yeah. That's perfect. All right. Like All right, so bring it back a little bit. We're gonna have to come back another probably an inch. Not too hair. It's going. Well, the moment I thought I'd never ever see, the engine is out of my damn car. And luckily it all went pretty damn smooth. So now basically, um, I didn't do it before because I don't want to end up laying in a friggin' lather of oil while I was uh, digging with the transmission. So I gotta drain the oil. I'm gonna take the clutch off. And then once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the engine stand, put it on the sand and start uh, stripping her down.
Okay, I got the engine on the stand, and I have the, uh, I mean, this is a Harbor Freight stand, so I don't 100% trust it. So I got the uh, cherry picker taking a little bit of weight off it, but the um, engine is pretty much uh, stripped of all its uh, manifolds. Everything uh, came off actually really easy. Nothing stripped, nothing got stuck, even the corner studs on the end didn't snap, which typically they always snap, but yeah, everything is stripped down, and uh, I think this is surprised the, uh, the mating surfaces even look pretty good. I'm not going to have to be doing much cleaning on those when I put the new uh, gasket and the turbo manifold on. So, next thing I'm just going to really do is just clean all this stuff up here. I'm going to start slapping the new hardware on. Okay, gasket surfaces are nice and clean. A little bit stained, but clean and smooth. Now I'm going to uh, test fit the turbo manifold. All right, this has got fiberglass on it, so make sure I'm wearing gloves. All right, stick a couple bolts in that thing. Yep, that fucking fits right at home. And of course, if you're doing something like this yourself on a Datsun, you want to make sure you get a gasket that matches the cylinder head, not the manifold. Alright, it's going to get it kind of tight. I'm not going to torque it down yet until I have everything on. A little anti-seize in case I ever need to take this off again. I want to make sure I can without breaking everything. Not snapping shit off. Well, it looks right at home. The turbocharger is in place. Went on with no problem because of course it did. It's the engine's designed for that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace both the oil inlet, high pressure, and outlet gaskets uh, because they're original and don't want to uh, have to end up doing that down the road. So I'm just going to do it while it's uh, out of the car, obviously.